Today, I'm gonna to show you how to use Shaperbox's Time Shaper to design stutters, reverses, scratching, glitch effects, slowdowns, tape stops, and multiband time twists. So before we dive in, what exactly is Time Shaper? Well, it's one of the many effect modules in our Shaperbox plugin. As you may have guessed, it manipulates time a bit like vinyl or tape. It's essentially a modulatable delay line. Incoming audio is stored in a buffer, but unlike a regular delay, you can jump, scrub and scratch back and forth through the buffer with a freely drawable LFO. Click through the wave presets to see what's possible. So let's begin with the basics, stutters and repeats. Here in the wave editor, playback runs horizontally at the current loop length. The vertical plane is time offset. When running across the top of the graph, the LFO line gives normal 100% playback speed with no delay. So here LFO length is set to one bar. If I drag the LFO line a quarter of the way down, notice how playback starts a quarter of a bar or one beat later. You can use this mini wave display to visualize playback. The white playhead shows the dry input signal being recorded into the buffer. The red playhead is the output audio we're actually hearing. And so with the LFO set to halfway down, we hear the audio playback a half a bar or two beats later. So let's use this knowledge to draw stutters. The line pen is the best tool for this job. Draw steps to offset sections of your audio. Next, let's look at how to slow down your sounds. Now pay attention because this concept is important. The angle of the LFO line controls playback speed. A horizontal line gives 100% playback speed. And when your LFO matches the angle of this gray guideline, you get 0% playback speed. The audio is stopped and no sound comes out. You can see this in the mini display. The red playhead is stuck at the start of the audio. So if I draw a line angled exactly halfway between 100% and 0%, this gives us 50% speed. This is the famous halftime effect. And like a vintage sampler, vinyl or tape, playback speed and musical pitch are linked. So at 50% speed, the audio is also transposed down one octave. Now let's switch to a synth loop so we can hear pitch changes more clearly. LFO lines at different angles play back the audio at different speeds and therefore different pitches. When snapping points to the grid, certain angles give octaves and fifths. And with snapping disabled, you can achieve any interval. Just be aware that this is time shaper, not a pitch shifter, so changing pitch always changes the timing too. And you can draw angled lines anywhere on the LFO graph, not just along the gray guideline. Next, let's look at how to reverse your audio with Time Shaper. If the angle of your LFO is steeper than the gray guideline, you get reversed playback. So here we get half a bar of normal playback. Then the same first half bar is played in reverse. The second half of the bar is discarded and never played. Again, the mini display will help you visualize this. So far, we've been drawing lines angled from high to low, but what will happen if we do the opposite? Well, a line angled up plays the audio faster. Again, the angle of the line determines the speed. Thank you. 
Now's a good time to look at the cross-hatched area in the bottom half of Timeshaper's Wave Editor. So this diagonal LFO line plays the audio at 200% speed, but when I hit play, there's silence for the first two beats. You can see the point where the audio will first start playing. It's where the green LFO line intersects the gray guideline. The buffer is empty when I hit play, so there'll be silence during the gray area until the buffer fills up. And once the buffer has filled, you'll hear the effect every time. To get around this, try to avoid drawing in the gray area unless it's crucial for the effect. Now, this gray guideline is more useful than you might think. An LFO point placed on the gray guideline always sends the red playhead back to the one of the loop. Think of it as a shortcut back to your first beat. You could use this to draw a classic buildup that repeats the first beat faster and faster. And to target specific offsets, hover over a point and the help text shows you its time offset. Next, let's look at turntable effects. Here's how to draw a tape stop. I'll start with a diagonal line, giving a slowdown effect. Now let's select the pointer tool. Click the LFO line to add a soft point and bend upwards. Curved lines create bending time transitions. Now, do you remember how we created reversed audio? It's where the line's angle is steeper than the gray guideline. So if your LFO curves too steeply, you get reversed audio at the end. To get around this, drag the end point up to remove the reverse until the finishing angle is similar to the gray guideline. Now reposition the soft and end points to dial in the flow you want. Next up, let's draw DJ scratching with Time Shaper. This method will keep your scratching in time. First, draw repeating steps, or use one of the wave presets from the stutter categories. Now click to turn some hard points into soft points. But keep hard points where you want to preserve the timing. Now turn on your door's metronome and select and move points to shift the scratching in time till it sounds just right. You can go even further with DJ scratching for authentic virtual turntablism. Here I've got a vocal starting on the first beat of the bar. I'll start by drawing a horizontal line where I want the scratch to end. So the vocal is repeated and we'll play for the last two beats. And in this section, I'll draw in scratching. The S curve pen is good for this. I'll stamp four scratches. Then with the pointer tool, I'll tweak the points to vary the scratching. Don't worry about the timing just yet. Now, a vinyl DJ will use the crossfader to cut the scratch's volume in and out. And we can mimic this with Volume Shaper. I'll draw in small volume cuts with a line pen to chop up the scratches. With this method, your scratches don't need to be so precise because the timing comes from the volume chops instead. To jump between the scratch variations, we can use Shaperbox's wave switching. I'll click in the first slot to store the current LFO wave. Now I'll make some changes and store this in the second slot. Now I'll make more changes and store these in the third slot and so on until we have a few variations. From here, you can use door automation to change the current slot. Alternatively, we can do this with MIDI. I'll load a new MIDI track. In Ableton Live, make sure there are no devices on this MIDI track. Route this MIDI track's output into Shaperbox's MIDI input. Then here in Time Shaper, I'll turn on MIDI switching and you can see that each slot is labeled with a MIDI note. Now I can play or program these notes on the MIDI track to switch waves and create a full scratch performance. Red 
And of course, MIDI switching isn't just for scratching. You can make even more complex setups to switch between all the Time Shaper effects we've looked at so far, plus the other shapers. And don't forget multiband. Try all of these time tricks across different frequency bands. So there's my guide to Shaperbox's Time Shaper. Make sure you watch my video on LFO editing for more Shaperbox drawing tips. And you can get Time Shaper and the full Shaperbox at cableguys.com.